Hi students and welcome to today's Live IELTS class. I'm hoping everybody has had a good week and is looking forward to a fantastic weekend. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you from beautiful Budapest. Hi Lydia. Hi Tamonish. Hi Pea. Nice to see a lot of our regular students. Hi Jai Neil. Welcome members to this class. Focusing on task one, writing a band nine diagram essay. And uh, of course, these lessons are brought to you by uh, gileshelp.com and aehelp.com. Aehelp.com for academic IELTS and general IELTS is gileshelp.com. We've got lots and lots of materials there for you to study and uh, improve your English, your communication, and get those nice high band scores. So make sure to go there and check out our websites. Uh, they look like this. This is our general one here with the green background. You can click that big red button to join us there. And uh, this is our academic one here with the blue background. You can click that big red button to join there. If you have questions, just send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com. I will gladly answer those for you. And again, right now we're focusing on task one writing and uh, coming up in uh, 24 hours, that's tomorrow, <laughs> we'll have uh, speaking part two for members and then speaking part three for everyone. So some speaking classes tomorrow. Okay, let's get into today's writing task uh, one question for the day. Uh, here we go. So this is a diagram, okay? In task one of the academic IELTS, you can get a diagram, uh, you can get a line graph, a pie chart, a bar graph, so lots of different types of task one questions, uh, but that's different from general IELTS, okay? For general IELTS, it's a letter, so that's different. All right, so here we go with this IELTS task one. IELTS task one writing. You should spend about 20 minutes on this task. Don't spend more time on task one because task one is worth one third of your final mark. Uh, your task two is worth two thirds, so make sure to just spend 20 minutes, no more. Okay, the following diagram shows the different types of clouds and, their alti and the altitude at which they are found. Uh, describe the main features and make comparisons where relevant, okay? Uh, oftentimes, it's a good idea to just read over the question twice carefully, make sure that um, it's absolutely clear. So again, the following diagram shows the different types of clouds and the altitude at which they are found, or altitudes, uh, which they are found. Describe the main features and make comparisons where relevant. Okay, and then write at least 150 words. So. Let's take a look at this diagram. Here we go. Up oh, there it is. All right. It's a nice, uh, colorful uh, diagram for us here, and we can see the different types of clouds. I think I have to. Yeah, you can see it. Maybe I'll make it a little bit darker, so it's a little bit better. All right. Just want to make sure that you can see that clearly. All right. It's maybe a little bit, a little bit clearer with this. All right, uh, I'll zoom in here anyway. Of course, it's clouds, so they're bright. <laughs> um, okay, uh, so uh, here we have our uh, diagram, and then here uh, we have our low altitude, mid, and high altitude. Um, you can't see the small numbers here, but this is uh, 2,000 meters here, okay? Uh, this is uh, 7,000 meters, okay, here. So there's a couple of lines there. Um, there's a line here that's showing 2,000 meters, and there's a line here that's showing 7,000 meters. And then, of course, here we have uh, one type of cloud, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten types of clouds uh, all together. Okay. All right. 
So, uh, and then of course we have the cloud names. So Cumulus, and we have the abbreviations uh, CU, okay? Uh, and then here you have another one, Cumulonimbus. CB, I love these cumulonimbus clouds. In fact, there were some really beautiful cumulonimbus clouds here in Budapest over the last few days. They're just magnificent. Um, okay, so this is what our diagram looks like here. Uh, this is what we need to discuss, uh, compare, contrast, uh, discuss the main features, okay? Um, so, firstly, we need to write an overview, okay? That's our first step. So for the overview, we need to paraphrase the question and give it some detail, okay? All right, so let's do that, okay? So in the overview, all we do, and there's no introduction, separate introduction, it's just the overview, okay? So in the overview, paraphrase the question with detail, that's number one. And then number two, uh, write a sentence or two, if necessary, about the most observable, visible uh, feature, okay? So here um, you have the following diagram shows the different types of clouds, okay? So let's do this together. I'll write the paraphrase for this uh, sentence, the first sentence with a bit more detail. Uh, you do the same and then we'll compare. And I can see some people who are in these classes regularly already know what's going on there ahead, which is great. Uh, I'm gonna do the same, okay? So, Okay, that's my paraphrase. Let's see what you have for your paraphrase, okay? All right. So, Abdul Boria says, the representative diagram demonstrate clouds which are compartmentalized into miscellaneous classifications and predominant discrepancies that can be investigated in accordance with their altitude. Abdul Boryi, uh, some of the language there is good. Some of it is unnecessarily complicated. If you use unnecessarily complicated language in task one, you will lose marks because your writing loses coherence. Okay, so Abdul Boryi, uh, let's simplify it. The diagram demonstrates clouds that are compartmentalized uh, into various classifications and can be interpreted accordance to their altitude, okay? So that would be still very nice and high level, band nine, but not unnecessarily complex. Uh, Paya says, let me just go to the diagram while I'm reading these so people can see this. Uh, Paya says, the provided diagram depicts information on 10 types of clouds as well as altitudes, low, mid, and high altitude at which they are found very nice, Paya. That is great. Okay, that works really well. Okay, that's a very good paraphrasing with detail. That's exactly what you want to do. Okay, let's see what other students have. Cavid says, the given image illustrates multiple kinds of clouds that emerge at certain altitudes in the atmosphere. Overall, there are 10 types shown, uh, and they differ greatly from one another. Okay, sure, not bad. All right. Uh, CB says, clouds can be different forms and size. We classify them depending on their altitude and sizes. I don't know that, CB. Uh, the diagram doesn't tell me if that's how we classify them. 
Um, I don't want to use my own information because I'm not a meteorologist. I'm not an expert on this. So I'm only going to write what I see here. Uh, for the first step, I'm just paraphrasing the question and giving some detail. Okay. Uh, Beck John says the given blueprint illustrates the 10 various types of clouds and their distances from the Earth's surface where they are located. Um, yeah. Okay. Beck John, that works well. Monica says the picture represents different types of clouds and their properties uh, according to their size and the altitude at which they are found. Okay, good. You don't need the rest of it, Monica, for the overview, so just paraphrase the statement, okay, the first part. Otherwise, it's good. Hassan says the given diagram shows 10 types of clouds in different altitudes around 7,000 and 2,000 uh, meters. From 2,000 to uh, 7,000 meters or more, right? It's actually, it goes above 7,000. So uh, again, we have the low altitude, mid altitude, high altitude, and this is 2,000 meters and this is 7,000. So try to keep that in mind as we get into the uh, analysis, okay? So 2,000 meters and here we have seven, uh, well, I shouldn't write it like that. It's seven kilometers for sure, but it's 7,000 uh, meters. You can write seven kilometers, I suppose. Yeah, why not? Okay, good. Um, all right. So uh, what is the most observable feature? So when we look at this diagram, uh, what can we notice mostly here? So what's the most observable feature? What's, what's the most obvious feature uh, when, um, when we look at this? Okay. So we need to include that in the overview. We need to give one more sentence about what is the most obvious feature here. So what can we see? Okay, give me that information. What do you notice right away? Okay, I'll make it a little bit darker here. Hopefully that helps. So I'm going to become quite dark, but that's okay. It's more important that you see the graph. Okay. Um, Ferdov says there are two huge clouds that give us rain. Yeah, the cumulonimbus gives us rain and the nimbus stratus gives us rain. Um, I think that's a very observable feature. I don't know if that's what I would write as the most observable feature, though. Uh, Beck John says different clouds are uh, situated at different altitudes. Um, except for the cumula uh, nimbus and the nimbus stratus, right? Because that seems to cover uh, two different altitudes as well. Um, okay. Uh, so there are two very large clouds and the rest of them are small. Uh, when I look at this, uh, at first uh, kind of um, glance, what I notice is that clouds come in all shapes and sizes, <laughs> okay? Uh, so, and at different altitudes, all right? So for me, that's kind of what jumps out at first. So let's write the main feature here about that, okay? So remember, again, simple, it's not always easy, but it's beautiful. So uh, I would say that at first glance, It is clear that these clouds have significant differences in shapes, sizes, and altitudes. Okay, so I think that's the most obvious. Again, you don't need to overcomplicate. You just need to write really clear and uh, accurate, and that will get you a band nine. So this is what my overview reads like. The given drawing depicts 10 different types of clouds, and there are three different altitudes. And I think Pea did a good job there by including the detail of low, mid, and high. Uh, 
at which they are present. At first glance, it is clear that these clouds have significant differences in shapes, sizes, and altitudes. Okay, so that's all you need for the overview. All right, so let me just uh, move that underneath the diagram now, and then we'll continue with our analysis. So before we write more, let's analyze this uh, picture, okay? Let's see what some of you have written for the main feature after a bit of discussion here. Okay, so Paya says, at first glance, it is clear that different clouds are created in different layers with different sizes and shapes. Yeah, Paya, absolutely, I agree. It's very obvious, okay? Uh, Lydia is saying that CB and NS clouds are rain clouds. I think that would be better in the analysis, somewhere in the start of the analysis, okay? All right. Jainiel, I'm not sure what that's referring to. Ah, Jainiel says clouds shape and size. There you are, Jainiel. So that was accurate, right? Shape and size is the most obvious feature. And of course, their altitudes. That's another obvious feature, right? These ones are way up there. These ones are much lower. These ones are lower still. This one covers quite a wide range here, and it's very large, and the cumulonimbus is all the way from the low to the high altitudes. They're just mountains of clouds marshmallowy, fluffy giants. Okay. All right. So some interesting observations, but again, keep it simple. Don't overthink it, right, for the IELTS, okay? All right. Hala says, clearly it has shown that clouds have different sizes, patterns, and locations. Not destinations, Hala, but locations okay i think is a better word in that case monica says at first glance it's clear that many clouds are at different levels and have similar type of color white and all of these are at varying altitudes yeah yeah it is so i mean most of them are kind of a white colored for sure um except of course the obvious rain cloud which is gray now on the uh paper-based dials you won't have colors to refer to okay um, so there's a good question there by one of the members. I saw that a moment ago asking, uh, if it's okay to say at first glance, um, there are different ways, uh, to write that students. So don't always write at first glance. A lot of students do that. Um, but you can write that in different ways. Okay. So at first glance, you can write it as, uh, right away or, immediately or clearly or um, on uh, first look instead of glance okay so there are different ways to say at first glance okay um, right away comma it is clear that these clouds have immediately comma it is clear that these ha clearly um, it is obvious right you don't want to write clearly it is clear okay so clearly it is noticeable that these clouds have significant okay so there are different ways to write it absolutely all right Okay, um, so before we go on, uh, we want to um, definitely identify some points of comparison with these clouds, okay? I'm just going to keep this here so you can see most of the, uh, the diagram. Okay, so uh, let's um, identify some points for comparison. Now... It's good to start with the primary, so the most noticeable, and then kind of go uh, in a logical pattern, okay? So what should we write about first? So if you're looking at this diagram, what do you think? What makes sense to write about first? 
All right. So CB says it is clear that Nimbus Stratus, please use the abbreviation like uh, you did, CB, NS clouds are the darkest clouds in the picture. Okay, so yeah, that's okay. All right. Um, definitely, I would talk about the two biggest clouds first, okay? So number one and number two, okay? So these are the largest clouds, the cumulonimbus and the nimbus stratus. Clearly, they're the largest two of the 10 clouds, okay? Um, they share a similarity, which is the rain. So both of these clouds produce rain, okay? Uh, and they do have a difference, right? Cumulonimbus is uh, found at all three altitudes. So it's a very large cloud, very tall cloud or high cloud that reaches through all three of these altitudes, okay? While Nimbus stratus is um, also a very large cloud, but it doesn't quite reach into the upper atmosphere, so into the high atmosphere. So it's a, it covers two uh, layers of the atmosphere, the low and the mid, but not the high, right? So that's a little bit of a difference, okay? As we're being a rain cloud is a bit of a similarity. Now, the other... Uh, similarity or difference is that the Nimbus stratus is all gray, okay, as uh, a couple of students mentioned, but this one's different. So that's what I would talk about first, okay? All right. So uh, let's do that. And then uh, what do you think would be the next? So after we compare these two large clouds, uh, what would be the next one to discuss? So what would be the next? So one is cumulonimbus, comparing it to two, which is nimbus stratus. So that makes sense. There's a lot of information there. Uh, what should we talk about next? What would, what would make sense to talk about next? Yeah, very good, Beck, John. Absolutely. So I would go from bottom up, right? So I would talk about these three clouds next. Then I would talk about these three clouds here. And then I would talk about these three clouds here at the upper atmosphere. So that would be my last point. Okay. And of course, depending on how fast you write and how good your English is and how uh, fluent your writing in English is, you can make comparisons like uh, the... Cirrocumulus or CC is uh, lots of little fluffy speckles of clouds that are kind of similar to the alto cumulus. So you could make comparisons here as well, but you have to draw the line somewhere. Remember, you only have 20 minutes and it's, there's a chance that you could write about this for an hour if you had enough time. Okay, so let's not do that. Let's just write for 20 minutes and discuss the main features and make comparisons where relevant. So uh, let's start with cumulonimbus or CB and let's uh, discuss its characteristics in comparison to nimbus stratus, NS. So all you have to remember is CB and NS. Okay, so that's what we're focusing on. So that's our analysis, and you can go ahead and start, and I will catch up to you, okay? Uh, fluffy, <laughs> Jai Neal. Um, fluffy means a kind of like a, a puff, okay? Like a puff of smoke uh, or like um, the tail of a rabbit, the fluffy cotton tail on a rabbit, okay? It's a type of texture or shape. You can also say like a cotton ball, okay? So different kinds of language we're going to use here to describe these for sure. So pay attention to what I'm using and pay attention to what your fellow students are using as well. Okay. So next is the analysis. I'm just writing this for your notes. Please don't write the word analysis in your actual essay, although it wouldn't be necessarily bad, it's just unnecessary, OK? 
Okay, so you don't need to write that. This is just for your notes. So, um, the two largest types of clouds, also the only two clouds which, well, let's go with that, produce rain are, it's going to be CB and NS are CB and NS, while CB is the tallest cloud stretching through all three levels of the atmosphere. NS is found in the lower and mid levels up to 7,000 meters. Okay. So that's the way I uh, started with my analysis here. The two largest types of clouds, also the only two clouds that produce rain, are CB and NS. While CB is the tallest cloud stretching through all three layers of the atmosphere, and I need to put a comma on both sides of that as it's an additive clause, NS is found in the lower and mid levels up to 7,000 meters. And then I can include a little bit about their colors, as many of you identified. Uh, furthermore, NS is a completely gray cloud, as where CB is mostly white with a gray lining at the lower level, okay? So there is the description of the uh, color. So again, the two largest types of clouds, also the only two clouds that produce rain are CB and NS. While CB is the tallest cloud stretching through all three levels of the atmosphere, NS is found in the lower and mid levels up to 7,000 meters. Furthermore, NS is a completely gray cloud as where CB is mostly white with a gray lining at the lower level. All right, let's see what some of you have. I see lots of great writing in the chat. It's fantastic. An says, uh, at deeper inspection, CB and NS are the two largest clouds which similarly produce rain. However, CB is found at all altitudes while NS is located from the mid to the lower altitude and NS appears as a darker color. On very good, I made a couple of corrections there, so take note of that, okay? For Dobbs says, analyzing in more detail, it is obvious that the two huge clouds, NS and CB, produce rain and the others do not. For Dobbs, careful, you have a couple of missing words there. The others do not. Um, usually students, the correct uh, leading expression is at deeper analysis or at deeper inspection, okay? Uh, at least in Canadian English. So Paya says, at deeper analysis, it is found that only two clouds, NS and CB, um, produce rain. However, the former one is uh, found at mid-altitude and the latter one is also found at higher altitude, uh, which is way more. We don't need to write that, Paya, which is way more. It's unnecessary. Uh, now, Paya, from your writing, it's not clear that uh, the cumulonimbus is uh, located at all three levels of the atmosphere, okay? 
So you need to be a little bit clearer there, okay? Uh, Schmidt is asking, what is the definition of altitude? Students, that's a good word to know, okay? So add that to your vocabulary. Um, altitude means the height from sea level. Altitude. The height the height the from sea level uh, the ocean is at zero altitude uh, if you have a fancy watch um, it will actually show you the altitude okay some apps on your phone can uh, show you the altitude as well all right the height i forget that e um all right so uh here we go with further analysis so looking good so far uh now we want to uh go from the lower to the higher altitude that makes sense okay so as our next step let's discuss uh these three uh, clouds here, the cumulus, the stratocumulus, and the stratus. Okay, um, so to the best of your ability, using adjectives and so on, describe uh, what you see here. Okay, now this is where you might want to use some similes, so looks like or similar to. Okay, all right, so that's our next step. That's number three. While you get a head start on that, I'll read some more of the comments. So Hassan says, it is obvious that both CB and NS are clouds that produce rain. Okay, Hassan, one more time. It is obvious that both CB and NS are clouds that produce rain. Uh, CB starts from the low altitude, 2,000 meter, and extends to the high altitudes over 7,000 meters whereas NS begins from the low to mid levels. Okay, good, Hassan. That's some nice writing there. All right, again, Abdul Bori, don't overcomplicate your writing. It's not the goal here, all right? Saswati says, at deeper analysis, it is clear that CB clouds um, present in all three layers and creates rain, although the NS cloud uh is at two layers it also produces rain it is also evident that ns is a darker cloud than cb okay that works all right Halla says, going into more detail, it is clear that CB and NS are the largest clouds in the atmosphere, and both of them produce rain. Okay. CB says, SC looks like a mixture of ST and CU. All right. SC looks like a mixture of ST and CU. Um, yeah, all right. This is where, of course, vocabulary comes in handy as well. Uh, let's see what you have. So Harkamal says, see you looks like a cotton ball. Yeah, very good, Harkamal. So you're using your similes, absolutely. So CU looks like a cotton ball, as where ST looks like a puddle of milk, right? <laughs> okay, and stratocumulus looks like a stretched cotton ball. Sure, okay. So for Dobbs, very nice. For Dobbs is saying, hey, don't overcomplicate. Besides these two large clouds, at the low altitude, there are three other types, ST, SC, and CU, which are dissimilar in shapes, but all have white colors. Yeah. Good. So that's some good writing 
for Dobbs. Let's go into that, okay? So it's C U S C and S T. So, aside from these two giant clouds, there are three smaller types found at the low altitude below uh, 2,000 meters. C U S T and S C. While all three of these clouds are white in color, C U and I believe it was S, uh, no, let me just check. T, yeah, look like cotton balls as where S T or S C resembles more of a mist. Okay, so there's a nice word to add to your vocabulary mist. Okay, uh, mist is when you have a lot of condensation, a lot of water or moisture in the low atmosphere um, and uh, it gathers as mist or another way to maybe say that uh, that's even better anybody know the word it starts with an f so kind of a synonym to mist um, but starts with an f and is only three letters okay if you look at this cloud you kind of realize what it is Okay, so if you're hiking in the mountains, I bet you that stratus is exactly that. Yeah, it's fog. Very good. Hassan, Parmar, very nice. It's fog, fog. Yeah, it looks like a fog, right? It's more of a fog. Okay, and somebody has even uh, added an emoji for fog. Very good, all right? So again, while all three of these clouds are white in color, C, U, and S, T look like cotton balls as where S, C resembles more of a fog. That's your band nine level writing for this. So let's keep moving now that we're on a roll. Um, and uh, here we have the uh, alto cumulus A, C, and A, S, alto stratus um, at the mid uh, atmosphere or the mid level here between 2,000 and 7,000 meters. That's 2,000 again and 7,000 uh, meters. So go ahead and describe these two clouds, AC and AS. There's some good looking clouds there. So go ahead and write those, okay? Back John, some good writing there. It's not however they are all white. It's uh, similarly they are all white. Okay. Uh, Mohammed, you definitely don't need to know the words in the diagram. So please do not try to understand these or write alto cumulus. Just use the abbreviation AC. That's why they're giving you this. I mean, they clearly know that. Uh, these names are coming probably from Latin, I would imagine, um, and uh, they're quite complex. So uh, you don't want to write these long words. You'll, there's no way you'll finish your essay in 20 minutes. Okay. Now you can even see some uh, more details here, like Nimbus Stratus is the only one that creates this heavy rain, right? And this is light rain, and this is a light rain as well, but this is the heavy rain. But we don't need to get into that much detail, okay? Yeah, you can, Beckjohn. So Beckjohn's asking if a sentence ends with two objects, so two nouns, can we say the former and the latter in the second sentence to refer to that order? Yes, you can, Beckjohn. Absolutely, you can. Okay. All right. 
Okay, Paya says, moreover, AC and AS, which are found in the mid-altitudes at 7,000 meters, um, are uh, similar in, in color, but AC are a cluster of small puffs of cloud, okay, or plumes of cloud. Sure. So I'll teach you some more vocabulary here with that as well. Nice. Okay, so AC and AS at the mid-altitude. So at mid-altitude between 2 and 7 kilometers, there are two small classifications of clouds, AC and AS. AC, or here, okay, uh, so Beckjan asked me about the former and the latter. So, yeah, I'll show it to you right here, Beckjan, how you can do that. So, uh, the former appears as a cluster of small puffs, while the latter is a unified stream. Okay, so that's another way to uh, describe this shape. It's a stream of cloud. Okay, uh, if you don't know the word stream, there's another word that you could use. Uh, it starts with a B and is four words, or sorry, four letters. Um, what could you use? So if you don't know uh, the word stream, there's another word that you could use. It's four letters, one, two, three, four. Uh, what's the word that I'm thinking of? Can anybody guess? Okay, so this is how you can do that, Beck John. The former appears as a cluster of small puffs, while the latter is a unified something. Okay, stream or beam, not beam, not brook, not boil. Let's see if you can guess if I give you the last letter of that word. The last letter is also B. It's not brook, it's not a beach, it's not a beam. It's a B first, B last. When I give it to you, I'm sure some of you will be like, oh yeah, okay, there we go. Uh, Bubba Murad, very good, it's a blob. <laughs> yeah, it's a blob, okay? So, a blob, a unified blob. All right, so learn that. Not bulb, but blob. Okay, blob is like a boop, blob. All right. So, let's keep going from here. We've got a little bit more to go. Um, we have the uh, high atmosphere here above 7,000 meters, and here we have three more types, CC, CS, and CI. Okay, um, so very nice. Let's describe these, okay, at the high atmosphere. I'm going to do that, so keep writing, and then, um, and then I'll look at a few more of your uh, responses for this. So here we have CC, CS, and CI. In addition, there are three more smaller clouds at the or above uh, 7,000 meters CC, CS, and CI, which have very distinct shapes. CC is comprised of many small speckles 
of clouds as where CI looks like brush strokes. All right. So So uh, these would be called small specks or speckles of clouds. And these look like brush strokes, right? It looks like I've taken a paintbrush and I've created some brush strokes. Those are the ones that look really beautiful when the sun is going down and we see them kind of as these magnificent, colorful red and orange uh, brush strokes in the sky. Um, Saswati says lots of vocabulary for clouds, which is true. But uh, students, the vocabulary that I'm using to describe the shapes of these clouds, so words like uh, speckles or words like stream or blob, uh, this is not specific to clouds. I'm just using it in this context. Uh, but these are very useful words in other contexts as well. So you will hear the words speckles or brush strokes or stream or blob in other contexts of English as well. So I'm just using them in this context, but they're not unique to clouds, okay? So keep that in mind, all right? Monica, the meaning of blob is a shape. Uh, think of like a blob of jello or a blob of goo, all right? Or a blob of pudding, for example. All right. So uh, we're doing good. Uh, Paya says, at last, above 7,000 meters, three clouds are found, CC, CS, and CR, where CC is seen as a bunch of small balls, and CS and CR look more like brush strokes. Very good, Paya. Nicely done. Aftab says, at last, we have CC, CS, and CI at 7,000 meters and above with distinct shapes from each other. While CC is a combination of droplets, very nice off top, droplets, and CS and CI look like raging fire. Very nice description off top, droplets and raging fire. Uh, Muhammad Azat says like big balloons, very good, okay, there you go. Now you're using your creative side and uh, your imagination, fantastic. And now we want to add a summary, okay? And yes, students, Adding a summary is way better than separating the uh, overview into an introduction and an overview. So instead of thinking about separating your overview into an introduction slash overview, um, keep your overview one together, write an analysis and write a summary. Now the summary is just something very obvious that we can see from the diagram or from the chart. So. Um, what can we kind of see that we haven't really talked about here? So what can we, what can we infer? So now that we've analyzed this in one simple sentence, what can we summarize about this? What can you say about it in summary? So if I asked you, now that you've learned all this great information about clouds, uh, if I ask you, so what can you tell me about clouds as a summary? Like, in summary, what are clouds? What are these things that you're talking about, these clouds? Uh, what would you summarize? What did we kind of learn from this diagram? Okay, Mohammed says there are differences of altitudes for all clouds, yeah? Okay, uh, Jai Neal says, big clouds produce rain. Saswati so says, uh, not all the clouds, just some are responsible for rain. Uh, Paya says, all types of clouds are above land. Um, okay, I don't know if that's the most valuable piece that we can take from this Paya. Um, 
Yeah, okay, and Hassan says, in summary, various clouds form at different levels, and uh, the sizes decrease as we get higher. I don't know about that, Hassan, because it looks like these clouds are fairly big as well compared to this one, for example. So, And this is all the way at the top, so careful, Hassan, with the accuracy of the information. I don't know if they actually decrease. Okay, um, I would keep it simpler than that. So I would say that they're all uniquely identifiable. Okay, so now that we're looking at this, we can see that all of these are quite different. None of them really look the same. Okay, they're all unique. So even though uh, nine out of 10 of these clouds are have the same color, um, each cloud is unique compared to the others. So that's what I would summarize about this, all right? So something simple, right? Don't overdo the summary. So in summary, after deeper analysis, it becomes evident that each of these 10 cloud types are unique and identifiable according to their shape and distance from the earth. Okay, um, so that's what I would say. That's kind of what we can summarize when we look at this. So in summary, after deeper analysis, it becomes evident that each of these 10 cloud types are unique and identifiable according to their shape and distance from the earth. And hopefully some of you will look at this diagram again. And uh, when you see one of these clouds and you're walking with your girlfriend or your boyfriend or your parents or your brother or sister, you'll say, hey, see that huge giant cloud that looks like a mountain? It's a cumulonimbus. Or see all those little puffs of cloud there at the top of that mountain that's an alto cumulus or hey look at that huge gray cloud that's a nimbus stratus and they'll be very impressed just because the names are really impressive right nimbus stratus Ooh, what is that um okay so yeah, maybe worth learning a couple of the main ones i think your average cloud is this one it's called the cumulus cumulus is your average cloud all right, everyone, so that's the essay for today. Uh, let me read it to you one more time. Uh, the given drawing depicts the 10 different types of clouds and the three different altitudes, low, mid, and high, at which they are present. At first glance, it is clear that these clouds have significant differences in shapes, sizes, and altitudes. The two largest types of clouds, also the only two clouds that produce rain, are CB and NS. While CB is the tallest cloud stretching through all three levels of the atmosphere, NS is found in the lower and mid levels up to 7,000 meters. Furthermore, NS is a completely gray cloud as where CB is mostly white with a gray lining at the lower level. Aside from these two giant clouds, there are three smaller types found at the low altitude below 2,000 meters, CU, ST, and SC. While all three of these clouds are white in color, CU and ST look like cotton balls, as where SC resembles more of a fog. At mid-altitude between 2 and 7 kilometers, there are two small classifications of clouds, AC and AS. The former appears as a cluster of small puffs, while the latter is a unified blob. In addition, there are three more smaller clouds above 7,000 meters, CC, CS, and CI, which have very distinct shapes. CC is comprised of many small speckles of clouds, as where CI looks like brush strokes. In summary, after deeper analysis, it becomes evident that each of these 10 cloud types are unique and identifiable according to their shape and distance from the Earth. And that will be your roughly 200 words, maybe 210, band nine level essay with good analysis. I hope that all of you enjoyed this class. And uh, hey, it's kind of fun to learn about clouds. We see them 
all the time above our heads. And uh, I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel myself wondering, what's the name of that cloud? I know it has a name, but I just can't remember it. So now, hopefully, you will. All right. Uh, you're very welcome, everyone. I'm glad you were here with me and I was able to share this with you. Have a great rest of your day. Tomorrow, I'm going to do two more classes, speaking part two, speaking part three, uh, at this time and a little bit earlier, so be here for that. Uh, much love. I'm Adrian signing out from Budapest. Uh, be sure to check out our websites, aehelp.com and gileshelp.com. Bye for now.